Hello YouTubers, and with the recent release of the Third Doctor TARDIS set, the re-release, -re and with this being, you know, about to be my nine year anniversary on YouTube, I thought I'd go back and uh, review one of my earliest videos, which was this, the First Doctor and Electronic TARDIS set. So yeah, here it is in its box. Now this is the same sort of style box that the first three TARDIS sets came in, basically the classic electronic TARDISes, all had boxes like this with a nice big window at the front, and a window at the top which you can see is full of dust. Taking a look at the packaging, you can see we've, even back then we had, includes opening doors and lantern lights, um, yeah okay. TARDIS features light and sound effects. And we've got a picture of William Hartnell from An Unearthly Child, with his years. And again, it's seeing what the set features. We've got the Russell T. Davis era logo, Underground Toys logo. Again, just some pictures of the TARDIS in action. On the back, we've got a massive, massive, massive biography on an unearthly child. You can pause to read this in your own time, but who am I kidding? Of course you fucking won't. It also says what uh, the box contains. And also, remember these? The Doctor Seal of Authenticity Skickers, or Official Skickers, or whatever you want to call them, yeah. Remember them? Uh, they went out, unfortunately, uh, during the early Max Smith era. But anyway, let's crack this thing open and take a look at what's inside. Okay, so here we have the first Doctor and TARDIS out of its box. So let's take a look at the first Doctor himself first, shall we? Haha, <laughs> see what I did there? So this figure is essentially a reuse of a few parts, but a lot of it is new, or at least was new at the time. Now, this cloaked and hatted uh, seventh, uh, first Doctor, apologies, was actually um, released not long before this TARDIS set, so everyone who bought the singular release of this was a bit miffed uh, that a TARDIS set uh, was announced not long after. But uh, the main difference is, is obviously the hat, and as you can see with this, it's gotten a nice sort of, um, I would say a charred sort of texture. I can't remember the name of this type of hat, but um, the head itself is mostly just exactly the same. It's just with a slight tweak to the hat, but just look how sharp um, the face sculpt is on this and the paint apps. It is just really, really sharp. I mean, this is um, when character, you know, were just on the verge of their quality control starting to ever so slightly tip um, with their new series figures before it would go all crashing down with the Series 6 line, but anyway, you can see there the scarf is actually just sculpted as part of the cloak in the back with the little stripes. And as you can see, it can go, it goes right round his neck, kind of like the Tom Baker scarf. However, unlike the Tom Baker scarf, the cloak and the scarf are not removable uh, because the head on this figure is not removable. And uh, I do like the fact that they do have this bit of the scarf just flapping out here. It isn't painted on the other side, which was a thing because um, if you remember the Pyramids of Mars fourth Doctor figure scarf, the back of that wasn't painted either. Here it doesn't matter as much since uh, it, there's not really much mobility of it. So to be honest, you can only really have it down like that. You can see all the buttons here, and I'm glad they've uh, made it look like the buttons are actually done up here. The coat itself, the actual, you know, rubbery bit of the coat here that goes around the torso, was actually a new piece. And they even went to the detail of uh, sculpting in his cravat, which is actually just, again, part of the coat sculpt. Although, seeing that, uh, you can actually see and this would have been part of the torso, his shirt just uh, down in there. The arms are exactly the same as uh, any First Doctor figure. The articulation for them is pretty hindered uh, due to the cloak. The legs and uh, 
are the same as I first got to figure again, but the paint apps on them are the same from the Dalek Invasion of Earth first Doctor figure. So, yeah, it's... There you go. And actually, um, just looking at it, yeah, there's not many crosses there in the line that are incorrect. It is pretty sharp and uh, pretty good and pretty accurate, so... One to along to that. Now, this figure did originally come with a walking stick. Unfortunately, um, I lost the walking stick, or I think, actually... No, I think I put it in a Tupperware tub with along with my other accessories. I used to do that back in the day and just put all the accessories in a little Tupperware container. But it is just the, for those who are unaware, it is just the standard black, not the brown, the black version of the walking stick. But he does come also with this, a skull. So just looking at the skull itself, you can see here that it's for its size, and it is really, really teeny tiny. It is incredibly well detailed. Uh, let's see if I can get a focus on that. There we go. Now, the inside, for some reason, they painted the eye sockets and the nose sockets um, a grey colour for some reason. I really don't know why they've done that, but they've also given it a dirty washing. You can see there, there's a little hole on the top, and the reason is you could put the walking stick in and make it look like well, sort of look like uh, the end of an earthly child, where there is fire. Da -da 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 -da. Okay, enough of that. But yeah, the skull accessory was a nice accessory, and that was included with the initial release of this figure as well, which um, retailed for £15 and was a Forbidden Planet exclusive. But anyway, now for the main event itself, the TARDIS. So... Here it is, and as you can see, if I just pull the camera back, you can see here that it is just a repaint of the McCoy box, literally a repaint. And uh, this was before they were doing new lanterns, so even the lantern itself is exactly the same. But, you know what? I remember uh, at the time when I got this, I re uh, it was my favourite TARDIS at the time. And today, it's probably my second favourite out of the toy line, shall we say. So, but, um, regardless of that, let's take a look at it, shall we? So, you can see here we've got the signage and that at the top. Again, this TARDIS sculpt is inaccurate for this TARDIS, unfortunately. But that was just a thing at the time. But taking a look at it, you can see here, it's obviously being painted... And yes, painted. This is when the TARDISes were painted rather than just moulded in blue plastic. They were actually also painted, which is why these ones uh, don't shine light through, not nearly as much as the B&M versions. But it's being painted in a dark blue colour, and then it's been given a, a lighter blue coat. Not a wash, but a coat of uh, paint over the top, which, particularly on the roof, if we just look at that, really brings out a lot of the detailing. And uh, if, looking at the public call box sign, you can see the outer border is white. Now the interesting thing about that is, it's not white in an Earthly Child episode 1, though it is white in the pilot episode. However, if you notice down here at the bottom of this TARDIS, You can see you, you've got a uh, dirty wash, not a massively dirty wash, though it is there. And this is, you know, pretty accurate to how it appears, you know, from episode one of An Earthly Child sort of here on out with the sort of bits of dirt here and there. However, um, in the pilot, it's pretty much clean and it shouldn't have these uh, layers of wash as many, so yeah. But it does mean. But something they also did is, um, I think one of the reasons they did this is so that you can clearly see the St. John Ambulance bag here, which actually um, is a printed, printed on rather than just being a sticker like the Max Smith box at the time was, I believe. So yeah, that's nice that it isn't a sticker, it's actually, you know, part of it printed just like the signage up here. And I do like the fact that these, you know, windows are very bright and very clean. Opening it up, 
as you can see the inside of the box is just like any other of uh, the classic series cardices with the little latch at the top and then the push button there and again since it is using the in you know an incorrect sculpt for this the lock rather is up here rather than being down here and uh, you know being much much larger than it should be such as the lightning on the top and the roof and that but you know looking back at it I am um, you know I shouldn't be driving at, at, at things as much as this car it is nice that we did get one and they did this is one character did try and they are trying again now so that is nice so yeah overall a very nice box indeed but uh, this one is also electronic yeah this is an electronic box so without further ado I'm gonna go and uh, try and find some AAA batteries and uh, put them in here and have a listen to the sound effects okay so I've uh, placed some um, batteries in it out, out of a TV remote I found let's switch on the on off switch and for now we'll just place it down ready unfortunately yeah um, it's hard to see um, even in deer like but these batteries I uh, yeah I need to get some new I need to get some new double A triple A batteries but it's it's enough so you get the idea you can see that the light is is flashing but very very dimly well it is still working thankfully after all of these years because to be honest after I did this review I did play with it for about a month and then I put it into storage and it's never been out of storage since so yeah big big massive uh, lump to get out but uh, it is a nice look to take a look at the backdrop here so as you can see it is the junkyard from an unearthly child and you can even see the I am foreman signage there but on the other side we've also got the stairs and that and the really weird mannequin but yeah even back then and that they were doing the custom backdrops and that for the stories which thankfully they have mm, sort of brought back they brought it back for the TARDIS sets so that is nice and with uh, the Dalek sets they you know they all have the Dalek ships background it would be nice if for the three packs it wouldn't have to be a you know a custom backdrop for each of the three packs just something other than just playing white you know would be nice but anywho let's go on to my final thoughts on this and what do I think of this TARDIS set well it's fantastic I do love this TARDIS set it is probably my second favorite um, out of the TARDIS sets mm, second maybe third favorite don't know because I do like uh, the fifth Doctor Androzani TARDIS but overall this is probably my second favorite um, TARDIS release ever now obviously good luck trying to find this like even trying to find it good luck with that so if you do try and you know track it down and B uh, good luck you know paying under a hundred and seventy odd quid for this I'm not I'm not joking out of uh, all the TARDIS sets I think this one might be the rarest out of them it's either this it's either this one or the original um, fourth Doctor TARDIS set I think it might be the original fourth Doctor TARDIS set but yeah these things are not easy to come by and actually I remember when I was um, going to Forbidden Planet I wasn't actually gonna pick this one up actually I was actually debating to myself whether to get the seventh Doctor TARDIS or whether to get the fourth Doctor TARDIS this one I wasn't actually gonna bother with but when I saw it in Forbidden Planet I just liked uh, the look of it and picked it up and to be honest, I'm so glad that I did back in the day because these things now are you know very very scarce now a lot of people are saying you know they should re-release this TARDIS and you know what I'm all for that um, and, and to be honest uh, a B&M version could actually be superior to this version because 
you know. We know now that they are willing to do new lanterns, so even if they did a new lantern, that would make it better. And uh, if they did a newer, more accurate roof for it, then that would be doubly so. But, uh, and also it would mean that we could have this now be blue around the rim rather than white, and also the paint and dirt and that over the St. John Ambulance badge there, so that would be nice for release, or you could do a second Doctor um, TARDIS with the flatter roof, whatever, even a re-release of this figure uh, would be nice, you know, you could um, repaint the trousers to uh, make them more like the uh, later trousers that he wore, because I, I think, yeah, um, make it look uh, like... Um, the War Machines. Yeah, you could do a War Machines set because he does wear this in the War Machines with the other trousers again. Just going to repaint and then with uh, this TARDIS as well. So that would that would be nice if they did do that, but regardless, you know, looking back at this, I appreciate it even more now than I did back then, and it is nice to, you know, take a look at it and look back at it with some hindsight. But anyway, that's it for this re-review, I hope you enjoyed it, and if there's any of my um, videos from the past, you know, from when I was filming on a crappy 240p webcam, or even when I was filming uh, way back on a 40p camcorder, you know, that you'd like me to do a re-review of them now, because obviously I reviewed this, uh, I think back when I was, I think I was only 12, maybe 13? probably 13 when I reviewed this so if you'd like a uh, 21 year old me to re-review any of my old stuff you know in nice lovely 4k then please let me know in the comments below anyway that's it for this review and I'll see you next time bye bye okay so I've got a problem and I'm debating whether you even did this review I've already taken these off and I'm acting to take stuff off from there because uh, I thought the TARDIS was behind here it's not it's actually in the middle which is the worst possible place it can be because there's literally I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to take bloody everything off in order to reach this fucking thing let me see if I can Focus. No. Okay. So, literally, I'm just going to have to uh, put these things onto my bed while being on a ladder. Right, darling. There we go. I think if I get the 13 Doctor set out of the way, then it should be alright. Hopefully. This is the difficult bit though. Oh my god, look at the amount of, amount of dust on that. That's actually incredible. Okay, I can see it. I can uh, show you. There it is right there. So now, I'm just gotta get to it. So. Oh, I forgot the Eleven Doctors set is actually right behind here. That is a problem, there's actually... There's actually so many things in there. 
That is unbloody believable. So how the fuck am I gonna get all these out? I was hoping can I just slide them slide them to the side. Actually that might work, I think I can I think I can get to it now. I think me let me see. Can I get to it? So if I move this tenth doctor set, take it out and put it here. You might be thinking why you're recording this whole thing. The reason I'm recording it uh, is so I can also remember in which order they all go back in because uh, yeah, I've been, I've been dealing far an hour with this now for about half an hour actually, and I thought you know what I should actually I should actually record it so at least I know where everything goes back. There we go. I'm I'm hoping I took the batteries out last time I put that back there. I'm pretty sure I did. Pretty sure I did. Um because I normally always keep batteries out, but Jesus Christ, the thing is thicker dust. But yeah, anyway, um let's go and review it. 